Hello, I'm Alexa and welcome to Los Angeles, California. So first of all, why am I here? Well, I'm here for work with my company Zendesk. Zendesk builds business software for customer engagement. That does not sound very cool, but Zendesk is making it cool by making it better. To attend our all creative team offsite. It's an event that our leadership team organizes every year to bring together our global teams to connect, collaborate, and get all on the same page about our team's goals. This is a huge effort because we have creative team members all over the world in distributed teams. We come together from California, Oregon, and Canada in the Americas, to Melbourne and Singapore in the Asia Pacific region, as well as London, Copenhagen, Dublin, Krakow, and Montpellier in Europe. Our creative department is rounding up to be about 100 people in total, which is incredible. Our team members are vast and come across multiple different disciplines, including product design, content strategy, UX research, and engineering for design systems on the product side. And then we've got brand design, copywriting, videography, photography, video producing, motion design, presentation design, interior design, and event experience design on the brand and marketing side of things. And finally, project management, research operations, and design community under our design operations team. This team is full of a lot of amazing people. And since we only meet like this once a year, I thought it'd be fun to make something together. Since working at Zendesk for about two and a half years, I think it's safe to say that I know this team quite well. And I know this team do have a great sense of humor. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexa. Hello, I'm not Alexa. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's very clear to me that no matter where we came from that we've had our fair share of embarrassing moments. A big one that comes to mind for me is an embarrassing moment I had when I was interviewing for UX internships back when I was still in school. I knew there was no way that I could be the only person with this kind of story so in order to introduce you to some of my colleagues I asked them to think of an embarrassing job interview story so I could share it with you. I think it's really important to remember that although job interviews can be intimidating and challenging at times that they don't define us. We've all had our moments and it's okay to mess up. We all have. And with a little bit of humor, we can learn to see that these are the moments that we need in order to help us be better. So, without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to some of the members of the awesome Zendesk creative team. And if you stick around till the very end, you'll get to hear one of my most embarrassing job interview stories. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, my name is Nicolette robichaud Carew. I'm Olivia Kingsley. My name is Ethan Cannett. I'm Emily. Mike Chen. My name is Nick Levesque. I am a creative director on the brand team. I'm a senior product designer. I am an art director on the brand design team. I'm a brand producer on Zendesk Creative. I'm a product designer at the Singapore office. I'm an associate creative director slash brand manager. <laughs> Okay, so most embarrassing interview story. Um, so earlier in my career, about 10 years ago, I was applying for a graphic design role at a tech startup. I had only six months of agency experience before that, or before college, so I was still really, really new. The interview process was pretty standard. Ultimately came in for an on-site interview for half a day. I thought I had it in the bag. I was really excited. <laughs> and then for the third time I, I met them, it was just me and the hiring manager in one room together, and I thought he was about to tell me that I just got the job, um, but he was a very soft-spoken guy. He, um, he, he sort of like mumbled a lot, kind of like me, and yeah, he, he said something that I thought that I thought that I got the job, and I was very excited, and I was like, awesome, great, so like, what are the next steps? And he looked really, really confused, and he was like, um, uh, well, we have a really big network. I, I think we can we can find a way to help you out. And I was, and then I got really confused, and <laughs> I, I don't really remember the rest of that conversation. But it was only until I was walking home that I realized, oh my God, I actually did not get the job. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part is my boyfriend at the time worked at that company and the company operated out of the same building that we were living in so I bumped into him all the time. It's not like I could just leave that situation and never see him again so I saw him very often and um, it continued to be pretty awkward. Before I joined Zendesk and I was like looking around for new companies to join, I was really interested in this crowdfunding website that basically in my mind what I saw in that company was that they're helping people like make their dreams come true. You can be like a tiny startup and try to get your product off the ground or like maybe you're in a time of need and you want to crowdfund from your community. And this service would help you do that. So that was really inspiring to me. So I applied, I got a call back and I got on the like a pre-screening conversation and I told them about why I was excited about the company and they're like, oh great, so like what's 
a campaign that you were really interested in or inspired by and I did not do my homework uh, for that interview so I didn't really have a good answer and kind of just like grasping at straws I like vaguely described um, the like front page campaign of that day <laughs> and they were like oh you mean like the thing on our website right now and I was like yeah like it's great so I didn't get the job <laughs> Way back when, when I was either just finishing college, I think. I was in early 20s, we'll just say that. And I had spent my senior year in Italy. While I was there, I like drank a lot of wine and took some cooking courses. And as a lot of 20 year olds are, I, I was very full of myself at that point. And I came back thinking that I just knew everything there was to know about uh, food and wine. So I needed a job when I came back and I wanted to be a bartender at this fancy new Italian restaurant that was opening up. So I put together my resume, made myself look really impressive, put on my coolest secondhand shirt and walked in there and uh, managed to score myself an interview. So I was told to come back a few days later. I didn't like prepare, didn't think about the interview, didn't really do anything other than kind of look at myself in the mirror and say like, you got this, <laughs> you know everything there is to know. Uh, walked in ready to just kill the interview, was so sure that I was gonna get this job and be a cool bartender at a cool restaurant, making tons of money. Very first question the guy asked me after a little bit of like small talk was like, so what's your favorite wine varietal? That is like the most basic fundamental thing that you can say about wine. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, it's like the grape. It's the grape that they make the wine with. And if you had if it spent like 20 seconds talking to any wine nerd anywhere, you should know what that is and you should probably have an opinion about it. And I didn't. <laughs> I had spent a year drinking wine going like, this is good, this is good. And it was immediately apparent that I had no idea what I was talking about and I was not at all qualified to work in this bar, in this restaurant. In a nutshell, I tried interview for Zenness three times and uh, I only got in on the third try. So the first time round didn't like, go too well because my wife, we had a complicated pregnancy. So essentially while I was doing the design exercise, I was actually in the hospital. Like, you know, just trying to take care of her and then like doing it at the same time. So I made a mess of the first design exercise. You know, it didn't go too well. So, but you know, I maintained the relationship and uh, we, we started chatting again. After the kids were out, had some time to, and, and space to think more uh, deeply about the design exercise. Had them up again uh, and like, would you be interested in talking again? Uh, you know, because I noticed that the, the space wasn't filled in yet. So lo and behold, we did another design exercise for the second time. And this time I got rejected because I did an Apple Watch app and I think they wanted to see more of my like execution skills. So once again, I was rejected. Uh, it was pretty disheartening. I just wrote a nice email and I said like, hey, you know, I don't think I gave a good account of my skills um, this time round. And uh, you know, if you, if you ever wanna talk again, I wouldn't mind like maybe just spending a couple of days with your team, you know, let's, let's just try things out, see what the dynamics are. It's more than just the, the exercise, right? And then uh, I think um, the email went, went well with the, the team. A couple of months later, you know, I got the chance again. Uh, this time I, I got through. So they brought me in to work uh, with the team for a few days. They kind of liked the, how I communicated with them. So this time I got the job. So yeah, three times. I'm a writer and performer on the side. I write plays and perform with theater companies and stuff like that. And so I had uh, a couple years in my 20s when I was basically traveling around and performing. And I knew that I needed to get a job. I was interested in working on, on a creative team and the tech industry had a lot of values that I wanted in, in an employer. Like I knew that it, I could be myself there. And so I thought this might be a good fit, but I didn't really have a ton of experience. I had worked as a freelance copywriter. So I was super excited when my friend Chelsea told me that there was an opportunity at this agency she was working at. So when I did my job interview, they immediately did did what most tech companies do, which is that they give you an assignment, like a writing assignment. This one was extremely difficult. They gave me a blog post that was a super long in-depth piece about solid state enterprise memory drives. <laughs> But it was deeply technical and, and to the extent that I don't think that's actually what was needed for my job. And I had never 
learned anything about this before. So I had to do it within 24 hours to read the article they gave me, but also do all of the supplementary research. So they had expected me to write a piece based on the piece they gave me. So I finally cranked something out in the wee hours. I don't know. I don't know anything about SSD, enterprise, whatever drives anymore. Clearly it didn't stick. They call me in, they go, I go to the interview. As soon as I get there, it's like in a giant room and I'm sitting there with this, the founder and she's like asking me questions like, what do you think it means to be empathetic? And what does it mean to work with people? you know and and i was like this is such a crazy contrast like one second ago in this interview process i was diving into this intense technology and now i'm expected to sort of just like talk off the cuff about really big human philosophical issues <laughs> and it's in this giant room like their biggest conference room like it was like they wanted me to feel scared and i did <laughs> The next thing that happens, I think I stumbled through that I, just like this. The next thing that happens is I go into a smaller room with a couple of other people who just ask me questions that are basically like, name some buzzwords. <laughs> and I was like, I, um, big data, cloud things. Like, what does this have to do with being a writer? There's no like actual connection to what I was expected to do or what I saw was my craft or what I was interested in doing. Anyway, I don't know. Apparently this all went okay, but I got the job. <laughs> but as soon as I got there, it was very clear that they didn't know what to do with a writer, which I should have known to begin with. That's my tale. The good part is that my friend Chelsea, who was working there, quit the day I started and then <laughs> got me my job at Zendesk. So I am always grateful for that. I can't believe I'm admitting this on camera. When I first graduated from college, I, I moved from a pretty small town to San Francisco. Got put in the grind of tech interviewing for entry level content management positions. I was on final rounds at a big tech company and I was really excited about it. My final interview was a back-to-back -back interview that was four hours long with about six different people. So I was pretty nervous for it. I made sure to do, you know, study my notes and have everything prepared and that morning when I woke up, I was a little bit tired. I didn't sleep so well, so I made sure to drink a lot of coffee to be ready and a lot of water to be hydrated. Long story short, I was way too timid to ask for a bathroom break during this four hour interview and didn't really realize that I really, really needed a bathroom break. And the final interview came around. It was pretty intimidating. Um, people so I felt kind of bad saying I'm sorry but I just I have to use the restroom can can this hold for one minute but I just couldn't hold it and I peed my pants <laughs> luckily I'm not sure anyone noticed but definitely ran out of there pretty fast when it was over did you get the job I didn't get the job but I think it was a silver lining because I ended up getting a job that I was way, way more um, thrilled with. I really believe, not just from that interview, but through all of my interviews and career development, that everything happens for a reason, even though rejection can be hard, but it, it really plays out for the better. Okay, so my embarrassing job interview story brings us all the way back to when I was still in college. I was looking for a UX internship for the summer before I graduated, and I had a personal connection introduced me to someone who was working at a super cool tech company I wanted to work at. And so I went in, and it was a very casual conversation. It was certainly an interview, but it was very, very casual. And basically, um, the conversation went really well, uh, but they didn't really have an intern ship opportunity available so he was going to like go back to who he had to talk to on leadership and see if they could basically make one for me from then on we sort of just went back and forth on email so i don't know a couple days go by maybe a week or so it was a while back i noticed on like the media that they had just launched this like super cool new product and feature and i was super jazzed about it and so i wanted to like let him know that i had just noticed that they did this thing and how exciting and hey just like it was basically i wanted to check in so i wrote him an email i wanted to just check in and see if you know if this opportunity was going to happen and i included the like how excited i was for him and his company for launching this really cool 
whole new feature. So I go on with my day and then I start to realize that a bunch of other tech companies are also launching really cool products and features on the exact same day. Kind of weird, right? Like, can you think of one day out of the year when tech companies launch really cool and innovative products and features on the same day? I'll give you a moment to think about it. No? It was April Fool's Day. <sighs> yeah, not a good look. So I don't really know like what the history is to April Fool's Day, but basically, uh, at least in America, it's this day, it's April 1st every year, this day where people are just joking more often than they usually do. And so a couple years back, maybe like four or five years ago, tech companies decided that they wanted to participate in April Fool's Day. And so I think it's hilarious and awesome. It's definitely like, it's not like they're trying to trick people to be mean. It's supposed to be playful and funny. I was so embarrassed, like mortified. I had just written this very serious email to someone who I wanted to work with, someone who I wanted to be my boss, and I had completely fallen for their joke. Sort of to make matters worse, uh, he emailed me back and he said that he wasn't able to help find um, funding for the internship so it wasn't going to work out and he completely ignored that I had fallen for the April Fool's joke like like didn't even mention it and I felt so ridiculous it's not like I think that because I fell for this joke that I didn't get the job but there was just no moment to just yeah like it would have been fine I think if he just would have been like ha 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 did you know they this was a joke or something, but he just didn't bring it up. Shoot, they got me. They definitely got me. <laughs> so this is a thing where right around April Fool's Day, uh, tech companies would start launching these like really cool, innovative, like different features that just seemed really like blue skies, like really just like outlandish ideas. And so I basically fell for one and yeah. <laughs> and maybe you have two because some of them seem really cool. And this one in particular seemed really cool. Like it should have been a thing. This desk isn't mine, but I'll be sitting here for the next two hours. I booked it on Airbnb. You pay by the hour, so it's more affordable than buying a desk. The owner of this desk will be right back. Introducing a new feature in the Files app, Screen Cleaner. Screen Cleaner uses the Smudge Detector API to identify imperfections. Working with Virgin, we've created a new interface called Total Temperature Control. Now every passenger will be able to customize their temperature from their seating area to a wide range of preset climates. Okay, ordering jumbo sushi platter from Amazon restaurants. Okay, playing your Catter Day playlist. We are all storytellers. That's what pulled me into this contest, you know, like, Stories of how to Photoshop and stories about the Hoppet Trailer HD. I encourage everybody to watch as many videos as possible before YouTube deletes everything tonight. All right, that's all for now. Hi, I'm Giuseppe. I work uh, out of the London office. I'm part of the brand experience team. Hello, my name is Tian Wei, and I'm the senior product designer working on Sunshine CRM, and I'm from the San Francisco office. Hello, I'm not Alexa. My name is Lynette. I work uh, out of the Portland, Oregon office for Zendesk. I'm a senior product designer focused on onboarding experiences. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm from the Copenhagen office. I'm a senior product designer working on Guide. Hello, I'm also not Alexa. I'm Fiona, product designer working out of the Melbourne office um, in Australia. I focus on Antibot. Hey guys, I'm Freya. I work out of London as a senior brand designer and I'm part of the brand experience team. My name is Austin. I'm a senior engineer on the design systems team and I work in San Francisco. Hey, I'm Debbie. I'm a product designer on the admin center in Melbourne. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm a product designer. I work for Zendesk out of Portland, Oregon, and I focus on the support product for a feature called Side Conversations. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a senior product designer on the Melbourne team and I work on Antibot. Hi, I'm Damien. I'm a product designer with our integrations from the Melbourne office. Great, thanks. Good job. My real title is SVP. It means sketch, visual, and product design. 